Welcome back to Medici in Depth, part of Levant TV's Press Reviews. Jody Ruderen writes an article in the New York Times on the Israeli assault on Gaza and he titles it A Push into Gaza but the ground has shifted. The writer says as Israeli troops once again operated inside the Gaza Strip on Friday, the risks of a deep entanglement, a failure to curb the rocket fire and the condemnation of civilian casualties were all too apparent. Twice before, Israel has battled Hamas, the Palestinian militant group that dominates Gaza, and twice before, Israel has halted under international pressure without eliminating the threat of rocket fire. This time, the writer and other analysts say the landscape is different. Israel has publicly framed a clear agenda targeting tunnels it says militants built to store weapons or stage attacks on its territory. This time, he adds, a weakened Hamas cannot turn to Egypt for respite. This time, Western leaders appear more patient. The writer argues if the action on the ground has changed from the past conflicts, so has the diplomatic horizon. Hamas, financially desperate and politically isolated, but rich in armaments, is desperate to score points with the public by either harming Israelis or curbing what it calls the siege that has plunged Gaza into economic and humanitarian disaster. Washington, which has held broker previous ceasefires, is consumed with other crises and has diminished credibility in the Middle East. Ruderin says Egypt, which during the brief presidency of Mohammed Morsi strongly supported Hamas, but now treats the group as an enemy and is loath to let its rivals Qatar and Turkey play a significant diplomatic role to aid residents of Gaza. That leaves President Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority, an adversary of both Israel and Hamas, weak at home, but increasingly active on the international stage. David Hurst writes an article in the Huffington Post saying the attack on Gaza was by Saudi royal appointment. Hurst says this royal warrant is nothing less than an open secret in Israel, and both former and serving defense officials are relaxed when they talk about it. Former Israeli Defense Minister Shaul Mufaz surprised the presenter on Channel 10 by saying Israel had to specify a role for Saudi Arabia in the demilitarization of Hamas. Amos Gilad, the Israeli Defense Establishment's point man with Mubarak's Egypt and now director of the Israeli Defense Ministry's Policy and Political Military Relations Department, told the academic James Dorsey recently, Everything is underground, nothing is public, but our security cooperation with Egypt and the Gulf states is unique. This is the best period of security and diplomatic relations with the Arab world. The article adds Mossad and uh, Saudi intelligence officials meet regularly, both in preparing for an Israel strike over Saudi airspace and in sabotaging the existing nuclear program. But the writer questions why do Saudi Arabia and Israel make such comfortable bedfellows? He argues Israel and Saudi's reaction was similar. Each felt they could only ensure themselves against their neighbors by invading them, for example Lebanon and Yemen, or by funding proxy wars and coups like in Syria, Egypt and Libya. They have enemies or rivals in common, Iran, Turkey, Qatar, and Hamas in Gaza and the Muslim Brotherhood, and they have common allies too, the US and British military. Hearst adds, the means by which Israel's allies in Saudi Arabia and Egypt are going about achieving it by encouraging Israel to deal with Hamas a crippling blow, King Faisal bin Abdulaziz would be turning in his grave as what the sun is putting his name to. The Saudi-Israeli alliance is forged in blood, Palestinian blood, the blood on Sunday of over 100 souls in Shejaya. And now we are joined by Tamara Barakat, political activist talking to us from London. Welcome on Mideast in Depth. Thank you so much. David Hurst argues in his article in the Huffington Post that the attack on Gaza comes by Saudi royal appointment. Do you agree with the writer? I totally agree, not because of the article in which he discussed lots of interesting points. The fact that um, any follower of the Middle Eastern politics can tell that Israel and Saudi Arabia are allies they don't share diplomatic affairs, but they are both allies of the U.S., and they both oppose the expansion of the Iranian influence in the region. So the fact that uh, Hamas has strong relations with Qatar, 
which is now uh, Saudi Arabia's arch enemy. Yes. And the fact that um, also Hamas has strong relations with the Muslim Brotherhood, which is also an organization that Saudi Arabia opposes. So I think um, both Israel and Saudi Arabia have so much in common, and they have they 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 share the same goals. So um, I do believe that the attack on uh, on Gaza is orchestrated and uh, supported by Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. like the uh, writer said. And uh, Tamara, tell us more about what you think of the situation in Gaza, and are you happy with the media coverage? Well, the media coverage is totally biased, and it shows one side of the story, which is. Uh, the Israeli side. Which and media are you talking about here in the West uh, or in mainstream the Mainstream media, Western media, because I've been following the situation as an Middle Easterner and as um, um, activist. Uh, the thing is, especially uh, in, in the incidents lately, um, um, I think you know uh, with the NBC's uh, reporter, Ayman Mohiddin, yes. who was asked to leave Gaza and stop reporting from there because of his balanced coverage and the fact that he was uh, showing, uh, the, giving the Palestinians more, uh, 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 kind of like a, a space and to, to voice their opinions. And he was uh, actually there when the, uh, the massacre on the beach that targeted four kids playing soccer uh, happened. So he was there and he covered it and they asked him to stop covering uh, the situation in Gaza, in addition to Diana Magani, the CNN reporter who was fired because of a tweet. Uh, she was in steroids and she witnessed Israelis cheering for Gaza being bombed and she had that tweet showing her disgust of this uh, of this thing. And then they, they asked her to uh, to stop reporting and I, I think she, she was fired. Mm-hmm. The fact that, that these two incidents I'm not saying like we can apply that to all uh, media outlets. Mm-hmm. The fact that these two incidents show you that uh, mainstream media wants you to only hear the Israeli side and not to give the Palestinians uh, a chance to express mm-hmm. uh, their point of view and to show the uh, the, the, the major co- difficulties that they are yeah. facing on a daily basis. Yes. Tamara Barakat, political activist, joined us from London. Thank you very much. Thank you. For more updates, please visit our website, levant.tv. You can also subscribe to Mideast In Depth on iTunes. Thanks for watching and bye for now.